I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order that the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551. The time now is 6 p.m. All right, item 1A, invocation as well as Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Huber. All right, feel free to join me if you, if you so desire. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful for the opportunity we have in this country as we celebrate our, our independence this month to, to gather here freely and to administer the, the, the business of this school district. We are grateful for all those who, who serve and are willing to give their time. We are grateful for the teachers, for the administrators who show, much, who show so much love towards these youth and helping support them so that they may be successful in their life and whatever endeavors that they may have. We ask you to be with them throughout this summer and we look forward to having them come back in a month or so from now. And we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And join us on the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Texas flag. On honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Huber. All right. Item 2A, awards and recognition. Receive Conroe ISD Education Foundation update. Yeah, with us tonight, we have our executive director uh, of our Conroe ISD Education Foundation, Ms. Marish Blair, and she's joined by Nelda Blair tonight to uh, give us the update. And I think they have great news to tell us. I can sense always. it. This is our <laughs> favorite. It's our favorite night of the year because we always get to bring great news from the Conroe ISD Education Foundation. I'm Nelda Luce Blair, proud 1976 graduate of Conroe High School. And I'm also the chairman of the board and president of the Conroe ISD Education Foundation. Um, as you know, every year we have our big fundraiser in, in the spring, our uh, Education Foundation breakfast. Uh, this year was no different. And what we've been doing is giving out scholarship after scholarship after scholarship uh, <clears throat> since then. So Maris Blair, our executive director, is here to kind of detail that for you, and you have a report in front of you. Maris? Good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you for letting us present this evening. It's such an honor to always be in front of this board. You are so pleasant, and I want to thank each and every one of you every year how you support our foundation. We couldn't do it without you. All right, so good news. It's pretty straightforward. The first page is all scholarships. Money, money, money. We gave out <laughs> a lot of money, close to $200,000 wow, awesome. in scholarships. And that was for continuing education for your student scholarships. For the All Means All, this was the first graduating year for the Sam Cable All Means All. Uh, so we have that information here, and we've already received their information. These kids are so excited to go to college. They're getting $2,000 that they've earned every semester, you know, from ninth grade. And, of course, our paraprofessionals for the bilingual and special education. There's another 24000 so up to $200,000 is what we spent of helping your employees get their master's, their doctorate, to get these paraprofessionals to help them get their bachelor's degrees and become certified teachers. And also give some of these senior students, as students a good boost to go to college and get some money. Also at the bottom, the welcome back. I think that's the most popular thing among your new teachers. Uh, you know, if you're a Conroe ISD graduate and you become a new teacher, you get a $100 gift card, and as you can see, we gave out 87 gift cards. And I do want to give a big shout out to BBVA Compass. They stepped up to the plate again this year, and they waived all the processing fees of $5.95 per card and waived it, and that's a huge difference to us. So they stepped up again, and they were able to sponsor that for us. Um, next page as everything, the breakfast. Uh, Appreciate seeing every one of your faces there this year. That is what we've raised in other related donations, $219,000. And that includes some of the scholarship monies that come in at the time of the breakfast, like the Gerald Iron Senior for the athlete, the NOAC Foundation, and also the Dick and Mary Cole uh, Special Education um, Scholarship. All those monies come in at the breakfast to help us, and that is our figure, 219000 
Huge. No. Uh, the next couple pages is just giving the kudos to these students who received these scholarships. We have a committee that reviews all the student uh, applications and meets the criteria. This is a great shout out to them as way to go. They're on their way to college next month. And then the next page is the All Means All. Like I said, this is the first group of the All Means All. They're all going. Um, and then 24 paraprofessionals. Those are the schools that they're coming from. Because now the list is getting so long, I don't want to kill trees <laughs> and just print almost 200 names out. Yeah. So we decided to kind of bring it all together and just tell you what schools are coming <laughs> from. Um, Maris, and then the next you, page, of course. Hey, Maris, uh -huh? could you give like just the one minute version of what the All Means All scholarship is, just sure to make will. sure everybody knows what that, what that uh, is? Sam Cable, as everybody knows, he just recently retired from Conroe High School. They go through with the counselor and they pick some ninth graders who are at risk, but you know, have meet a education threshold to receive a scholarship and they earn $50 every semester. They keep a grade point average, they attend classes until they graduate as a senior. And Sam Cable monitors these, I mean really monitors these and gives them that extra push and mentors them. And out of the original, um, the first year there was originally 12, 10 of them are going to college and they met the threshold. Wow. That's really big yeah, to stick too. with it from ninth grade till you graduate as a senior. That was, that was really big. And so his, um, he is seeing the rewards of this. Uh, but, and he does raise all the money, correct. And we monitor, we uh, administrate the money, but he is the one that gets out there and shakes the trees for the money and gets people from the community to really support these kids. Uh, and every year, we do an award ceremony with them, and their parents come, and everybody cries because it's a good day. <laughs> it's a really good day. Um, and there are the campuses for the 128 continuing education scholarship. This is open to all the employees that have their bachelor's that are seeking their master's and their doctorate, and they can apply for it every <coughs> year. So we have a, quite a few return um, applicants that are getting their master's and their doctorate. And um, the last two pages, this is where I really feel the foundation is blessed, way beyond blessed. These are our sponsors. So, and PBK and Elliser and all these, uh, Duratech, DBR, IBI, the list goes on and on for two pages. So, anyway, that's all I got for you. Good news. It's great news. And it is well, such an honor to I see uh, Mr. Sanders be a part of this. Yeah. So, yes. So, you know, I should have known this from being on the board years ago, but are y'all aware of the type of foundation that y'all have being anywhere else? I mean, I know we can't clone y'all, but are y'all cloning the program? Well, to, like, actually there... today, I've met with another school district that's trying to kind of revamp and reshape their education foundation to mirror Conroe ISD Education Foundation because they think this brings more back to the district of helping people uh, advance their education versus giving um, specific project grants and stuff. They really feel like this will impact the kids more in the classroom by helping educate the person in front of the classroom plus the administration who brings the curriculum, uh, the nutrition, everything together. It all impacts every child. I mean, y'all have made such an impact in our community and mm -hmm. I was just hoping Besides what you've built here over the last several years, you know, if you could reach out and build it in other places, that would be even a phenomenal more reach. And that's true. Isn't Mr. it true we that have, uh, we receive quite a few inquiries about this, especially at the smaller school districts, many that don't have education foundations and want to start one. And aren't three or four helped... districts always in attendance at ours? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We always invite them, and they they love to come to hear <laughs> Dr. Knoll speak usually, and uh, and to see what we do. Uh, but we have mentored, uh, well, three of them now, I guess, that have started, and uh, several others that are just trying to get reach the next level. So you're right. The reputation, you know, gets out, and they want to know how we do it. So we're happy to share. We're certainly not in competition with them. Awesome. Nelda, I just want to say thank you to you yep. and to Maris and to the rest of your board for all of the hard work that you do and all of the effort that goes into it, it is so much appreciated. I know that 
our district employees that are, have been able to take advantage and advance their careers because they're able to advance their education. And I just want to say personally, thank you to both of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, we never miss such blessings like this until we don't have them. And every, right, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, so it's always a situation where it's underappreciated. So we really appreciate you guys, as Mr. Sanders said. All right, let's go uh, item 2B, special board recognition, science fair winners. Dr. Noel. All right, here to introduce our science fair winners for this year is Dr. Susan Caffrey, our headmaster of the Academy of Science and Technology, Dr. Caffrey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good evening, President Datron Williams, members of the board, Dr. Null, and guest. Good evening. I'm Dr. Susan Caffrey, headmaster of the Academy of Science and Technology at the Woodlands College Park High School. I want to thank you for your continued support of all of our students, and in particular for STEM in our schools. A little dear to my heart. I'm not sure if you're aware, but our local science fair is probably the largest in the state of Texas with over 1,700 students registered. Uh, students advance from our fair to the Science and Engineering Fair of Houston. If students receive a grand award at Houston, they qualify for the International Science and Engineering Fair. This year, eight of our students earn grand awards at Houston. Students who receive first place awards at Houston qualify for the State Science Fair. And this year, we sent 46 students to the State Fair. Two students, pardon me, two students earned Best Affair, the equivalent of a grand award, Kabir Jolly and Daryl Prevalor, qualifying them automatically for the International Science Fair. We also had several first place winners. Uh, here tonight, Daryl Prevalor, an engineering mechanics. His project was the mini workstation for astronauts redefined. Stephen Drabin and Jack Paler, who could not be here this evening, and Kabir Jolly in system software. This year, we sent the largest number of students to the International Science Fair that we ever have, 10. I think there is not another district in Texas who can boast of that. Um, at Intel ISEF, three of our students won place awards. Adam Kassam first won $3,000 for his project in plant science, organic stimulation of plant growth, inoculation of bacterial endophytes from Lyrsia or Azoitis, Prerit Chowdhury, won second place in $1,500 and a $21,000 scholarship. Mm -hmm. And then Kabir Jolly also won second place for $1,500. So with that in mind, there are two students here I would like to present to you tonight, Adam Kassam and Daryl Pravalor. They will come up. These fine young men are from the class of 2019, so they just graduated and will head off to college in a few weeks. We have prepared them for their future, and I think they have served us well. So if you'd like to go shake hands with the board members. No, no, it's Mr. Moore going to say a few words. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm going to step right up here real quick. <clears throat> Gentlemen, on behalf of the board, we just want to say congratulations on your outstanding work. <clears throat> The reasons that our educators and our administrators dedicate themselves uh, to this profession, the reason that this board works so hard to see that our educators have what they need in the classroom is to turn out results like this. Um, not just to see you succeed academically in the classroom, but also to see you succeed in life, be productive members of society, and change the world when, when you get ready to take that next step. And looking at the titles of your projects, you're going to be changing the world. Okay? <laughs> so uh, we're so proud of what you've accomplished. Uh, don't stop now. Carry this throughout your life. And there's no doubt that you guys are going to be so successful, and we're very proud of all that you've accomplished. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Where are you going to school? 
Where's that? Okay. You, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Are we going to school? Thank you. All right, man. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Impressive. <laughs> that was very imp extremely impressive. I think my science fair project was turning butter into a fume or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Most element. <laughs> These guys here make us look like. Anyway. Um, wow. Item 2C, special recognition and ambassador awards, district support staff, Dr. No. All right, Dr. Hines, present this item, please. Good evening, President Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Noel. The Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees regularly <clears throat> recognizes various departments that support the work of our schools by honoring outstanding employees who exemplify excellence and provide exceptional service to our students, to our families, and to our staff. It is my honor and it's a privilege to present to you this evening five outstanding employees of the Conroe Independent School District support staff for your special recognition as Ambassador Award recipients. And as I introduce each of you, if you'll come forward, please. Um, from the Finance Department this evening, uh, Shelly Cartwright. Shelly, come on. <laughs> and Shelly, Shelly joined the Finance Department 19 years ago. Shelly has served in various roles with the Finance Department, including payroll specialist, accounts pay payable specialist, and activity fund coordinator, as well as her current role as accounts payable coordinator. Shelly's extraordinary work ethic makes her a true asset to the finance department. The quality of work and energy that Shelly brings to the finance department are invaluable. In addition, uh, she's also led efforts on our safety committee up there and she's done so much work. And we're so grateful to have Shelly as part of our team. Thank you, Shelly, for your dedication and service to Conroe Independent School District. Awesome. Next, awesome. from the communications department, we have Susan Dowden. Susan has been a member of the communications family and print shop team since 1996. She steps up when we need her to help in other parts of the print shop while keeping up with her press and envelope printing uh, responsibilities. From going out on the mail route to deliver internal mail to campuses um, or to helping with report card mailings or other mailroom duties or to working in the bindery in the copying room, copy room, whatever it is, she's always willing and able. Susan is dependable, responsive, and when asked to pick up new duties, she just jumps right in. We're thankful to have her as part of our team, and we're thankful for her service. Awesome. Next from the Curriculum and Instruction Department is Jennifer Diamond. <laughs> Jen is a friendly face and a voice who supports district departments, principals, and district staff as they expand and monitor grant funds. And she has been with Conroe ISD now for three years and has worked in education for a total of 12 years. She's always willing to jump in and help out as needed. Uh, federal programs and compliance can be a very detailed oriented uh, area and Jen does a fabulous job breaking down the requirements for district and campus staff. Uh, Jen Diamond represents excellence and service on a daily basis. She is hardworking, cheerful, capable, and detail oriented and is very deserving of this evening's recognition. Thank you. Next from the technology department, we have Richard Rodriguez. Richard has worked for CISD since 2016 and in his current position since 2017. Richard manages enrollment, rollout, and upkeep for more than 40,000 Chromebooks in the district, as well as he is also our only iPad support technician for more than 16,000 iPads. Um, Richard is patient and eager to help staff with their Chromebook and iPad issues. He's always ready and willing to learn new technology. His organizational skills are impeccable, as they must be for that many <laughs> devices. And Richard's job responsibilities include Chromebook management, iPad management, charging cart and cabinet support, Apple TV support, help desk support tickets, uh, district scanner management for staff development attendance, 
in Google Expedition setup. And Google Expedition is when you had those glasses wow. where you go get to go to load the places. Wow. His work enables our students and teachers to access technology resources readily, which of course impacts instruction and it makes a huge <clears throat> difference in the lives of our students. And we appreciate all that he does for CISD and our students. So thank you. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Next up from um, um, Human Resources Department is Judy Wold. Judy joined the Conroe ISD family as a paraprofessional in 2002 as an instructional aide. Uh, she joined our human resources team in 2016 as the substitute specialist when she transferred from Cryer Intermediate. Her performance evaluations over the years provide a narrative of glowing comments. Uh, Judy has been described as being a hard worker, someone who shows initiative, as someone who is helpful, someone who is organized, who is a great communicator and great with students and staff. And on a daily basis, she demonstrates her kindness in this position, um, her kind and giving spirit when working with campuses and substitutes. She's always positive, always professional. In addition, her HR team, team members are also very appreciative that Judy is a fabulous cook. Um, <laughs> Judy Wold is a wonderful asset to the Human Resources Department and very deserving of this ambassador award this evening. Thank That's you. Fine. Before you sit down, you know, I just want us to think about something. Every day if you go to work or you go to school and you come in and your computer turns on and you go in the supply closet and there's things that you need that are in there and you don't know how the bills get paid or you don't know who's recruiting our substitutes or Richard, I need to talk to you about iPad. I need your cell phone number. But you know your, your iPad if you have problems, whatever it is, it just works. I want us to think about the next time you see one of those people that takes care of those things and remind them that you really, really, really appreciate them. Because we really do here at Conroe ISD have some great people, and you're, you're among them, obviously, as ambassadors uh, today. And we just want to say thank you for all that you do. It's behind the scenes. You're not out there in the public eye, uh, but, but you know, you're great people and you help make Conroe ISD the great district that it is. And I just want to, on behalf of the board, personally say we thank you and appreciate you very much. Thank you. Bring any snacks tonight? Really appreciate it. I don't remember me. Thank you. You got a big job, don't you? Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. It's so nice to be here. Right there. That's the way to go right there. All right. Thank you. All right. Item 2D, citizen participation. Ms. Goffrey, has anyone registered to address the board? No one has signed up. All right. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Item three, consent agenda. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, I have received no request to move anything off the agenda. Move approval with consent agenda as presented. Second. Uh, gentlemen, I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All opposed? Unanimous. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Item four, curriculum and instruction. Receive uh, 4A. Receive 2019 preliminary star three. Dash A and E O C results, Dr. No. And Dr. Phillips and Dr. Hines will present our star results. <coughs> three, third, three, three. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. No. This evening, Dr. Hines and I are pleased to present our 2019 preliminary star scores. We say preliminary because the final scores do not come out until August. The scores we're presenting tonight include the scores of all students who took the assessment. Between now and August, the state will clean up the data and will remove any scores of students who were not enrolled in Conroe uh, on our snapshot date. Once scores are finalized, you'll receive a more comprehensive view about where we stand. 
Um, since the new STAR assessment has come out, we've been following a pretty consistent pattern, and, and this year, again, is no different. For the most part, when the state goes up in one area, we tend to typically go up as well. If the state goes down in an area from one year to the next, we typically follow that pattern. We do have a few variances this year, but um, it's, it's usually just a point or two away, so let's go ahead and take a look. With um, elementary third grade reading, you can see that the scores, uh, the state stayed pretty consistent, and we are uh, still 5% above the state, which um, you'll, you'll notice that in every score we're above the state. Third grade math, you can see um, the state scored at 78%, and we were at 84%. With writing, uh, we were, worked really hard on writing this year. We were happy with our four-point gain. You'll see that same type of um, gain in, with the state as well. Fifth grade re reading, you can see that there was an increase with the state, same with um, Conroe ISD. In uh, math, you can see the state had 89%, Conroe at 93. And then in science, you'll see that the state is at 73% and Conroe is at 84 for 2019. Sixth grade reading, um, we were 11 points above the state. And then in a sixth grade math, you can see that we are nine points above the state as well. Dr. Phillips, can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, of course. So those scores, that represents the number of students that met or exceeded some standard? It's the um, percent of students who met at the approaches level of the assessment. Okay, that's Yeah, the assessment system is... is very very complicated there's actually three different scores that, that are derived right. and so we're just showing you approaches right now because that's all we have okay all right yeah, we'll get you. more of that the later. lowest passing all right. standard that, that's yeah. what i expected yes. okay yes all right good evening again we'll kind of hit through some of the highlights of the uh, secondary scores and in the junior high area uh, the junior high you'll see the pattern is outperforming <clears throat> the state on every assessment from a level of everywhere from four to eleven percent um, and with an increase from last year in six of the seven areas. So taking a quick look at um, reading, you can see 82% to state 74, and in math, 77 to 73, um, and then in seventh grade writing, 77% uh, to the state 69%. In eighth grade, looking at the eighth grade preliminary scores in reading, 90% level to the state's 84, and in 8th grade math, 93% to the state's 87%. Uh, there's, of course, 8th grade is uh, fortunate to have four assessments, so we have two more. Science, uh, with we formed at 88% compared to the state's 79%, and we saw a jump there, a pretty good jump this last year, and so certainly as we have those kind of jumps, we like to look back and see what did we do that was so successful and keep doing it. Um, and then 78%. Uh, in social studies. And for the high school areas, um, you'll see again some, some positive trends. English, end of course, English 1, uh, we were at 77% to the 63% of the state level. And in end of course, English 2, 77% to the state 67. So we saw an increase in both of those areas, which we were looking for. And of course, U.S. history. Uh, we were at 97%, which is very good in, uh, compared to the state's 93%. So that's the secondary. Any, any questions about that? I have a question. <clears throat> Just um, for the star scores, correct me wrong, but those stars, the star testing and the scores, that only applies to public schools, correct? Do private schools and homeschool programs, uh, this, that does not apply to them, correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. And if I if I may, Mr. Williams, we had a, a, one of our science fair winners was just able to join us. So if I could invite Dr. Caffrey back up, All so, right. uh, I'd like to recognize our our final award winner who was able to make it. Board President, Mr. Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noel Partby. Uh, we do have an eighth grade student who is recognized for her stellar work at the Texas Science and Engineering Fair, Rachel Ross.
What, what project? What was the... Oh, can you say that slower? Eighth <laughs> grade. <laughs> White butter on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm shaking my hand. I just want to know somebody's <laughs> smart. <laughs> Let's start here. <laughs> and leave me hanging. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, good. Outstanding. Impressive. Congratulations. Congratulations. I wish you the best. Great speaker, too. Pepperita. That's the best I could do. All right. Um, we're at item. Okay, item five, administration, receive information about senior, senior priority pass program. Dr. No. All right. Our Director of Communications, Ms. Sarah Blakelock, will present this item. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. I'm here to share some information with you about a very exciting program we are looking to offer uh, starting this year. Um, to further show our appreciation for members of the community, especially those age 60 and above, living in the Connor ISD boundaries, we will be adding a senior priority pass program, which will allow interested residents to receive free admission to athletic events hosted by Connor ISD, excluding playoffs, as well as fine arts events, excluding fundraisers. And so all that we'll be doing is asking people to fill out, who are interested to fill out an application, show some form of ID so we can verify an address, and then they'll get a little card that they just wave when they go in and they can enjoy all of the talents of our students for free. Do you have any questions about this program? So will there be a link on the website for the application? How, give me the nuts and the bolts. Yes, of how so that, what we'll be doing work. is um, we're actually going to be sharing this information through a variety of sources. You know, we're going to be putting an ad and a community mm -hmm. newsletter so that, you know, targeting that portion of our population so that they can see the benefit that we're offering. And then we will also be, I'm sure it will be in our local newspapers, and um, we'll have a link just off of our website under the community section. Okay. What do they get, like a card or a badge or something? Yes, we will give them a specific card that will be good okay. for. I think it's a great way to keep the community engaged in our district. I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, if I'm 60 years old and I don't have any children in the district anymore, but it's not about having just children in the district, but it's going out and supporting the community in general, and I think it's a great opportunity. I'm glad we're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to be able to show our appreciation for that portion of our community. For those that uh, that may have a caregiver with them, mm -hmm. does it also include a, like one caregiver to go with them as well? That That's a great question, and I think that we would probably be able to accommodate that for people who depend on someone to attend, mm -hmm. you know, functions outside of their home or residence. Perfect. I think that's good. That's a good point. Awesome. Okay. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Blakelock. All right. Item 5B, receive a capital improvements update. Dr. Null. All right. Danny Phillips is here tonight in uh, Mr. Foster's stead to present this item. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board. Dr. Null, it's my pleasure to give you guys the uh, capital improvements Update. We'll start with our first facility, which is Suchma Elementary. You'll notice the uh, site is progressing well. <clears throat> Started the site uh, uh, improvements, such as the irrigation landscape, over the last couple of weeks. So we should be on schedule to have it ready. Here's a picture of the front entry of Suchma Elementary. You'll notice the front entry is going in just as planned. <laughs> Here's a picture of the interior uh, of the foyer showing completion, wall, acoustical panels, etc. Here's one of our completion uh, status of one of our classroom showing the millwork, some of the teacher uh, desks being installed, ceilings, carpet, etc. Here's a, another finished picture going on of the library. Um, Here's a finished picture of the kitchen serving line. 
another completion picture of the uh, gymnasium. Currently, we're, we're scheduled to open up in August 14th, and we're on, we're on schedule. When will we take possession? So we actually moved the principal in on Monday of this week. Okay. All right. So, so we're, we're, currently, we're currently possessing. working on technology and furniture okay. and things of that nature. Great. Thank you. Am I missing or from before? Is that a new element, the stone? It's a different elevation look for us this time. Yeah, I yes. noticed the stone yeah. also. Mm -hmm. The stone yeah. on, the front. on the columns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great look. Mm -hmm. It's a correlation with the developer out there in that area. So. Yeah. Very, it's very, it is very pretty. It's very nice. Yeah. Is this, this project running? <coughs> it's obviously on time and on budget, under budget. Oh, it is. It's running, it's, it's running on budget. Uh, time is a little bit of an issue, but not much. So due to all the rains, but... Uh, Sure. We're getting it. Okay. <coughs> Perfect. Next facility is our Austin Additions renovation. This is a site uh, view of the, the existing facility uh, completed up on the roof side, the, 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 the existing uh, old 50s that. section completely removed. Wow. Here's a front view of the front entryway. Here's one of our typical classrooms with furniture being moved into place, ceilings, carpet, millwork, et cetera. Here's a final view of the Austin showing the technology marker boards, teaching walls of that nature being completed. <coughs> this one's also to be opened up August 14th. We're on schedule. Can you go back to the very first picture there for Austin? The pond in the back? That is our detention. That's going to be a detention pond? Yes, sir. That's okay. our water, water detention. Okay. So we'll have a fence up around that? We, we will have a fence around that. Okay, all right. So is it, it really, you think it'll, it'll hold water? I mean, it's, I know it can hold water. I'm just saying, do, do we anticipate that there will be some water in it? I'm just looking at it, knowing all the rain we've had, and I don't see any water. Yeah. So the, if you notice the west parking lot, the majority of that west parking lot? Yes. On the right side, it runs yes. into the detention. The overflow happens to the east and going back to the 105. Okay, to the north. so this is just kind of for the overflow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's to catch the west parking lot and then it flows out. I got you. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. It's a detention pond, not a retention pond. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, thank you. Okay, I, yes, sir. Go back. <laughs> I, I was out there today and I, I just, I just want to make sure where, where is the queuing line? I mean, this is teacher parking over here behind the new gym uh, on the right. Uh, the right hand side is the teacher parking okay. and it's the bus drop off. And that is behind the school. That is on the west side of the school. Yeah, okay. Yes, that is the so back door. All of this off. Well, that's on the east, east side. side. It's on the east side. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. East side. Okay. Yes. Now, show me where a bus drives in and where it goes. Does it come in the teacher parking lot side? In other words, I'm looking for the queue space because it's hard for me to tell from what I'm looking at here or when I was out there today, whichever, okay? We were supposed to increase the queuing to get the traffic off of 105. Yeah, so That's all I'm interested in. Yeah, Mr. Husband. So if you, if you look at the east driveway there, right? that is where the, the bus comes in. Okay. And, and it comes all the way up to here and okay. drops off, wraps around, and goes back out. Okay. Now how about the car line? The car rider is on the west drive. Okay. And if you were out there today, you noticed all of this is new concrete now? Yes. yes. So they'll, they'll drive in. And right here, uh, this is all cleaned up if you notice. All yes. this is a drive. Oh. This actually goes right here where this trailer is. That'll be gone here shortly. And, right. and they drive back out. Okay. That's I, a double stacking lane there, there as well. There was too much new concrete. And yes, sir. Still too much moving and cleaning up. And, yes, sir. I mean, stuff that I couldn't tell. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Excellent. Any more questions? All right. If that's it for the for the uh, Austin Elementary, uh, the next is the Stockton Junior High. Stockton Junior. Here's the front uh, elevation, showing the the entire facility being built out. Uh, the uh, the project project is is moving well. Here's an exterior elevation showing the waterproof uh, waterproofing on the building envelope. Progress. This is an interior elevation showing the CMU block the MEP ductwork, all of the utilities occurring on the inside. This picture here is on the exterior showing the, the football field, the track, and the PV field. 
which is our photovoltaic side. And this one is scheduled to open up in August of 2020. We are on schedule. It's, it's going good. Can you remind me how yes. many panels we'll have out there? Um, yeah. I just I don't recall exactly, but okay. seemed like there was somewhere around probably 100, 110 panels. <clears throat> There you go. 115 rows. 115 rows. So okay. we split the fields. Quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We split the fields up to optimize the site. I got you. So 115 rows equates to. There you go. Okay. Thank you. I knew it was a lot. Mm -hmm. Say that again, if you would. Requirement. Yeah. Eight zero percent. Yes. Yeah, eighty percent. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be almost. Uh, and in the summer, literally, if, if it's not used for summer, we'll be it's, it's a sell back. Summer. That's correct. At a percentage, yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next, the next item is our our Conroe High School additions renovation. As you guys know, this is a a, a two two part uh, addition renovation. What you're seeing here is the academic second floor uh, wing getting ready for finishes in here. You'll notice that the ceiling tile is is just about to drop in on that floor tile is completed. Um, here's one of our classrooms, just had the carpet uh, installed. Uh, the ceiling tile is near uh, inst installation for that, that classroom. Here's another one of our classrooms showing that the, the carpet's still covered and the, one of the classroom millworks are being installed in that area. That, uh, that second floor is, is scheduled to open up August the 14th of this year. We're on schedule. The following picture is on the first floor academic. And this one we've we've actually renovated. We've demoed out all of it. We're going back in with new, uh, complete walls, uh, MEP side of it. And this one is scheduled to open up uh, December, January of this this year. And that uh, completes our our update. Hmm. Andy, you did a good job. Great, on great job, thank you, sir. Yeah, brought it home. Great job, brother. Look out easy. <laughs> All right, item six, business and finance, Dr. <clears throat> no. All right, Mr. Darren Rice, our CFO. <laughs> All right, we have a... Uh Several bids to look at this evening, and, and I'll just start with the first one. So uh, good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. Uh, tonight we're recommending that the board uh, award RFP 19-05-02 Grease Strap Services to Magnaflow Environmental, Inc. for an estimated annual expenditure of $120,000. Request for proposals pertaining to the purchase of Grease Trap Services for the district were emailed to registered vendors through the e electronic CISD e-bidding system. Three vendors submitted a response. The request for proposal was advertised two times in the Conroe Courier. Vendors were asked to provide firm pr prices for cleaning the CISD grease straps. Uh, best value offers are recommended for board award. I move we approve as presented. Second. Gentlemen, we have a motion, second, and in discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Passes unanimously. Let's go. Item uh, 6B, consider award or of Q, gasoline, diesel, and propane. Propane fuel. Yes, we're recommending the board award RFQ 19-05-01 gasoline, diesel, and propane fuel to the five vendors listed below for an estimated annual expenditure of $3.5 million. Uh, electronic bid invitations were emailed to 63 vendors through the electronic e-bidding system. 12 vendors responded. The proposal was also advertised two times in the courier. Gasoline and diesel prices for school districts are set by the oil <coughs> price information services. This bid is for the surface for the service of supplying us with fuel and all of the cost inclusive, including any applicable fees, tax, or any other cost. The cost of this service is calculated by adding a price differential to the fuel price that is set by the oil price information services. Awards shall remain firm for one year through July of 2020, automatically renewing annually for two additional one-year terms through July of 2022. Price comparisons with the current bid shows a differential net decrease of 19%. Proposals were evaluated by the Transportation Department and reviewed by the Purchasing Department. I recommend you approve. I move it. Second. 
Motion second. Discussion? I do have a question. Go ahead, Mr. <clears throat> um, I noticed in the, the material <clears throat> looking at the evaluation totals, mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of cases where, um, say, a particular vendor was selected for gasoline and then they came in a close second uh, for biodiesel. Did we look at any cost benefit for choosing the same vendor for both of those, even though they came in second, perhaps if we used them for two different fuels, we might get a cost break. I, Does I do that not, question make sense? Yeah, yeah, I understand. I do not think that was one of, one of the evaluation criteria that we had listed, but that is a good point. We could look at that in the future. Is that right, Rick? Okay. Yeah, that, that was not used as criteria. So they I mean, I understand if they're a yeah. distant second, we might not want to look yeah. at it, but when they're just in a couple of points, there might be some cost benefit of using them for multiple sure. fuels. I got a quick question for you yes, on the uh, on the bidding process. So yes. you, use, you use the electronic bid. You said you yes. sent through an electronic bid. My question is for those uh, for those uh, companies out there that work with school districts and work with government entities. Do they are they all aware of this type of bidding process? In other words, are we are we getting it out there to all those that are interested in it? Because you said you had how many respond? Twelve twelve hundred. Did I hear that wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. Twelve vendors responded. Twelve vendors yeah, we, responded. We actually send out. We sent out to 63 different vendors. Twelve actually responded. Okay. And 63. And the electronic bidding process. I, I understand that that's what we use. Is that's fairly common practice. Yeah, uh, we've been using that 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 process for for several years now. Now it has actually improved our communication with. We've actually attracted various vendors because we're able to use different services to, to, to pull those vendors in. So actually our vendor participation has increased with this system. Perfect. Thank you. All right. More discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. Um, item C, Charter Bus and Student Group Travel Services, RFQ. That's right. Yes, sir. I am recommending the Board Award RFP. Uh, 19-04-05 Charter Bus and Student Group Travel Services to the 16 vendors listed for an estimated annual expenditure of $571,000. Requests for proposals pertaining to Charter Bus and Group Student Travel for the District were emailed uh, to registered vendors through the CISD e-bidding system. The pro proposal was advertised two times in the courier. 16 vendors submitted a response. Vendors were asked to provide pricing for Charter Buses and or student group travel needs. Vendors were asked to provide their current rates and sample quotes for common trip scenarios. Uh, not only price are we looking for, uh, you know, looking for from these vendors, but there's two other things we're looking for. First is to make sure they have proper insurance on their vehicle. <clears throat> and number two, make sure they have a proper safety rating. Um, our purchasing department every month goes through the files and goes through the reports to make sure that their safety rating for these charter companies are, are held in good steed. So, so we do have them fall off from time to time where we have to, you know, we have to cut one of these vendors loose. So, yeah. so that's very important. And so uh, do we need a motion? Yeah. We have to At this time, uh, recommend no, no, we need to go ahead and get a motion. Send a motion. I move approval. We have a motion. I second it. We have a second discussion, Mr. Husband. We're just going to ask, what what is our current policy on, I mean, because when you're talking about 571, it's not necessarily the the school's budget. Each school has a budget for uh, this type of thing, and, and they're mm -hmm. taking longer trips. They take this kind of bus rather than the school buses. Okay, mm -hmm. what is the current policy? Uh, be it band, be it athletics, be it science fair. Okay, Pre previously, previously we had a prop policy that was set at a certain mileage. Now we look at it basically on a case per case basis. Um, so it'll go to the appropriate assistant superintendent. They will they will review and approve to make sure that a charter bus is appropriate at that time. Um, you know, charter buses are used through all of our. Uh, you know, above district uh, sporting events for our football teams, bands, et cetera, because they are traveling, you know, greater distance than, than let's say, 100 miles where it used to be, stuff like that. So there's not a certain mileage. I mean, you know, if, if, if somebody was playing regional football in the Astrodome, or, or Astrodome, listen to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we played there once, but anyway. That, that's not a, we, 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 we you know, used like to, I said, Houston is not as far, but if it was a regional thing, they, they would approve that. 
just like they would approve to Temple or Dallas or Waco or wherever. We but, used to use six, miles. we used to have sixty miles as a as a, as a hard point, uh, nothing below that. But we changed it case by case, just so, because there are those instances where prudent judgment would say, okay, they need to use a charter bus for this purpose. So that, that's what it allows us to do. If a booster club or support organization is paying for this, do they have to use one of the vendors yes. off that list? Mm -hmm. To drill down just a little deeper mm -hmm. on the safety aspect. Yes. So tell me one more time. You said the safety C seating. Well, where, where there's their, their safety score that they're mm -hmm. and, score, but and, where, and, and Rick, where do you Rick get might that be able to. Most Rick, can safety. can you talk a little bit about their safety? Uh, Department of Transportation. Department of Transportation. Uh, so we pull the U.S. Department of Transportation safety reports each month and check those, and we keep files on them, and so we update everyone as they. Making sure we've had them where they'll some will come through and say unsatisfactory something come up, and we'll immediately strike them and let everybody know we can't use that vendor anymore. Every so. every bus I'm glad you do. Has that truck. Yeah, no, I know. I was just following that. Make yeah. sure we're the ones looking at that, and not relying upon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we review that every month. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, we're good. <laughs> you should know that's good. <laughs> all right. Uh, we have a motion second. Any more discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Motion passes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Rice. Appreciate that. Okay, we're still on you. Item D, preliminary 2019-2020 proposed budget overview. Big night for the night. Rice, yeah. Yes, it is uh, truly my pleasure to present the preliminary 2019 to 2020 uh, budget. This is the first time we've able we've been able to see the whole budget together, uh, you know, after the effects of House Bill Three. But uh, I would first like to recognize the finance staff that are here this evening. We have Janice Stowers and Karen Garza. They're really the ones who, who get in the nuts and bolts of this thing and put it together for us. So thank you for your. Now, each year I like to start my uh, budget presentation with our financial highlights for the year. And the district continues to get recognized from the state comptroller's office for our transparency presentations. We get awards for our transparency stars for traditional finances, debt obligations, and contract and procurement presentations. And all these presentations can be found on the district's transparency website. Uh, Texas Smart Schools was formerly known as the FAST Report. Uh, this program was started in the state comptroller's office and it highlights success in two dimensions, academic performance and cost-effective finances. Conroe ISD is one of two districts. It was three last year. Friendswood fell off. So we're one of two districts out of 1,100 in the state, over 1,100, that have received five stars, which is the highest rating for 10 consecutive years. So we're very proud of this award or recognition. Uh, our ERG ranking, ERG stands for Education's Resource Group, and they perform an analysis of the 200 largest districts, and their ranking is also done on academic and financial Third. performance. And uh, ERG ranks us second in the state, only behind uh, HEB. And how big is HEB? 24,000. 20, yeah. About 24,000. About a third the size of Conroe. Yeah. Right. And yeah. where is Birdville anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I've been around a long time. I ain't never been through I, I, Birdville. I, I, for, it's in Fort Worth, up in the I Fort think Worth they area. made that one. Birdville's up. in Fort Worth? <laughs> yeah, somewhere up there. <laughs> it's uh, easy when nobody can find you to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so we're the largest large district. The largest large district, yes, sir. Thank you. So now we'll start with the legislative update and you know when the 86 legislative session began the governor came out and he really had three primary goals. One was to, to have property tax relief, one was to put more uh, money into school classrooms, uh, and the third was to fix school funding. You know my thought is in their attempt to fix property tax relief they might have made school funding a little bit more complicated at least in the first year as we move forward through with House Bill 1. But with the passage of House Bill 3, uh, the legislature, and they called it the Texas Plan with House Bill 3, it provided $5 billion in property tax relief. They have $4.5 billion for education reform, $2 billion toward teacher pay, and $3.5 billion, uh, billion for recapture uh, reduction. Now, we went through these in details at the June 4th, so I'll just kind of go over some highlights. Um, House Bill 3 increases the basic allotment from 5140 
per ADA to $6,160 per ADA? You have a question, sir? No. No, okay. Um, and this is the mechanism that, that the legislature used to actually uh, do their tax compression that we'll talk about in a little bit, and then also be able to provide uh, the teacher raises. Um, it requires districts to provide full day pre-kindergarten to eligible four-year-old students. Uh, we're estimating this cost in the first year of implementation at about $5 million if we were to go to full day pre-K uh, starting at this school year. Um, it provides funding for increased teacher compensation. Um, 30% of our gain from House Bill 3 must be spent on compensation. 75% of that 30% must be spent on teachers, librarians, counselors, and nurses. And you'll see in our presentation that that requirement is about a 2.5% raise for our teachers, and you'll see that we exceed that requirement of House Bill 3. Um, it creates an index for, for a compensatory education funding based on census blocks. It extends career and technology education to seventh grade. Um, it replaces the transportation linear density calculation with a per mile allotment, a much more simpler calculation. It's about a break even for our district. Uh, moves to the use of current year property values, and we'll see that effect as we go into next year. Uh, it increases the golden pennies from six pennies to eight pennies. We currently access four golden pennies. And it provides uniform tax relief for the biennium, uh, seven cent compre compression for our tier one m and rate. Uh, as you will see, we'll be proposing an MO tax rate at 97 cents for this year. Uh, new allotments is the dual language allotment and the dyslexia allotment. Dyslexia allotment, uh, we've really seen a, a lot of growth in dyslexia. In 2016, 2017, we had 2,342 students identified as dyslexic. Uh, in 1819, we had 3,244. So that's a growing program. That'll generate about $2 million. The dropout recovery allotment and the college career and military readiness allotment will generate about $1.5 million for the district. The uh, fast growth district allotment will generate about $14.6 million for the district. That is because we are recognized as a, in the top quartile of growing districts. And then the early education allotment will generate about $4 million for the district. And this allotment is what is identified to help us with the implementation of our pre-K program. And then we have a safety and security allotment that was from Senate Bill 11, and that will generate about $300,000 for the district. Now, there are some allotments that were repealed, and so we must look at those also. The gifted and talented allotment was repealed. The high school allotment and the staff allotment were all repealed. That's about $8 million worth of funding to the district. Although the gifted and talented allotment was repealed, we still must have a gifted and talented program and, and, and we must report that to the state. So that's still a requirement, although it's no longer funded as a separate allotment. Okay, our 2018-2019 uh, tax rate comparison with our, with our peer school districts. You know, our tax rate is currently at $1.28, and we're 17.6 cents below our peer average tax rate and we're four cents below the closest district to us, which now is Fort Bend, since we've added them as one of our peer districts. And, and even with the implementation of House Bill 3 and some of our tax uh, proposals that we have coming forward for the board, we still feel like we're going to be in a very good position uh, with our peer districts. Just a quick review of our general fund balance. Uh, this chart represents the fund balance for the general fund over the past 12 years. In 2008, our fund balance was at $76 million. And we're anticipating ending 2019 at $139.6 million. Uh, also, during the, these years, the board has transferred excess fund balance to do various capital projects. And you can see each of those projects listed below. And the years that they uh, were done are identified in the red, block, red box, red boxes above. <clears throat> Okay, we'll start taking a look at the major components that drive the budget, and they begin with our 2019-2020 budget objectives, and they include to meet the needs for the 2019-2020 school year, and that includes opening of Suchma Elementary and the 11th grade at Grand Oaks High School, and, it, and as always, we want to provide a competitive compensation plan. And we always place a high priority on safety and security at our campuses. <clears throat> this year, in addition to the uh, additional police officers that we hired last year, we're also hiring additional prevention control officers at our high schools. 
And then we want to protect the district's operational infrastructure by establishing a district-wide maintenance fund. And we'll talk about that uh, in more detail as we move forward. Our certified property values, our property values are estimated to grow at 5.5% this year. That'll add about $1.9 billion to our property values, bringing our certified value to $37.7 billion. One thing we must point out that with the passage of House Bill 3, uh, the tax increase that we can recognize in the maintenance and operation funds moving forward is only 2.5%. So if our tax values grow more than 2.5%, it will compress our tax rate further. And you'll see the, uh, the effects of that as we move further uh, it, with House Bill 3. Our attendance data, our state revenue estimates and campus expenditure budget allocations rely on our enrollment data. For the upcoming 2019-2020 budget, we're using an enrollment increase of 1,350 students for a total enrollment of 64,187 students. This year, we're increasing our ADA percentage up from 94% to 94.3%. <clears throat> and it is always important to note that we have to budget based on our enrollment. However, we're funded from the state based on our average daily attendance. Just a quick graph of our enrollment trend. You can see it's pretty linear, about 1,500, 1,400 to 1,500 students per year. So now that we have discussed those major components that really drive the budget, we will now look at the effect that they have on the budget itself. And this is uh, our 2019-2020 funding estimate. And on the tax revenue side, um, with House Bill 3, we're actually looking at a tax revenue decrease. Even with our 5.5% AV growth, we have to realize a 7 cent tax decrease. Um, and that's a loss of about $7.76 million. However, um, you know, in, in the past, we've transferred $10 million every year from the, from the general fund to the debt service fund to buy down our debt service tax rate. Um, we're proposing um, to, to not continue that program and recognize that revenue uh, in the general fund, and that way we'll be able to, to create a capital maintenance fund, and we'll talk about that in detail uh, in, in a little bit. So total tax revenue increase, if we take into account the $10 million that we've been transferring, is $2.24 million. Our state revenue, based off of our 1,350 student growth in the implementation of House Bill 3, increases by $45.11 million. We're able to, once again, increase our investment income by $1 million. And we're increasing our TRS in-kind funds by $5 million. TRS in-kind fund is a re reporting requirement from TEA, so you will see the offsetting uh, expenditure uh, later on in the presentation. So total estimated available funding, $53.35 million. So now looking at the expenditure side of the budget, this is our 2019-2020 salary increase. If y'all excuse me real quick. It includes a 3.5% raise for our teachers, librarians, nur nurses, and counselors. And also, for every teacher with six plus years of experience, they will receive an additional $500. That's at a cost of $9.6 million. Pay grade AE levels 1 through 3 will also receive a 3.5% raise. Pay grade AE levels 4 through 10 will receive a 3% raise. That's at a cost of $1.7 million. Administrative business will get a 3% raise. Administrative support, instructional support, auxiliary and police, those are our hourly employees. They will all receive a 3.5% uh, pay increase. Uh, total cost of the pay increase, $14,046,000. This is our approved 2019-2020 teacher hiring schedule. It includes a beginning teacher salary of $55,500. The 3.5% general pay increase is on the midpoint is equal to $2,000. And as you can see reflected, uh, teachers with six plus years of experience receive an additional $500. Is that at um, CISD or in, in, in all in education? What, the, the, the increase for the, six plus years? Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that is a requirement of House Bill 3. It requires you to differentiate the raise for uh, teachers with uh, six plus years of service. So he's saying that the services 
that they qualify for them? Is that just for CISD services or no. other school district services? And collective. It's, and it's collective. Is that what I think the answer is collective? Collective. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now our personnel for growth, uh, for support at the campus level, uh, you know, once again, 1,350 new students coming in, uh, the opening of 11th grade at Grand Oaks High School and the opening of Sechman Elementary. It includes 153 new positions uh, that are made up of 107 teachers, 10 administrators, nine professionals, and 27 paraprofessionals. That is at a cost at roughly $9 million. And then to support those campuses, um, we, we're requesting 56.4 new positions, mainly in our transportation, police, maintenance, and custodial departments. That is a cost of roughly $2 million. Uh, total new positions, 209.4. Uh, total payroll uh, addition, uh, $10,980,000. Now just a summary of our projected expenditure budget increase for 2019-2020. Uh, we just discussed our additional personnel for growth. That's uh, 10.98 million. Salary increase was 4.05 million. Um, we have the line item in there for the potential employee retention stipend. Remember that is potential, so we have a line item in there for the budget because we do still have some some unknowns out there in the budget. You know, you know the possibility of a 2019 November, I mean a November bond referendum. If you know how how that potentially could fall, that those funds might be needed for uh, summer work, safety and security at our campus level. So, so just some thoughts there. Some of the programs, I didn't list them all, but we talked about them earlier. Pre-K, CTE, bilingual, dyslexia, comp ed, school safety, uh, career and college readiness and military readiness increases about $7.29 million. Uh, other expenses, including utilities, insurance, fuel and supplies, that's the ma majority of the utility increases for our new campus. Um, Insurance, we are seeing a slight increase in our in our uh, property insurance this year, so that's reflected there. That's one point eight one million dollars. Uh, the offset to our TRS in kind funds five million dollars. Total operating expenditures forty four point one three million dollars. Uh, the next line item you'll see is the transfer to the capital maintenance fund for ten million dollars. That's the ten million dollars that we're currently transferring to the debt service side. We're now uh, recommending as. As we listened during the May 2019 bond referendum, and we listened to certain groups, and, and, and I'll just point out the, the, the Patriots PAC, you know, talked about us having a lot of maintenance items in the bond. And then also the associated cost of interest on those maintenance items. Um, so they had concerns about that. So we listened to them, uh, we listened to our focus groups, and they also brought up these maintenance items. Um, so this is our recommendation to address those items. This is funding $10 million per year. Uh, you know, if, if there's a potential, you know, bond for five years, that would be up to $50 million uh, that we would, we would pull those items out of a potential bond and pay for those out of cash. Uh, so you're saying, what does that get us? The interest savings on that $50 million dollars. And, and, and this was, you know, I thought in my head, I knew it was a, a million or so a year, but it's $39.9 million in interest savings uh, if we pull that $50 million out of a bond. So that's just, uh, you know, something to, to think about. Well, those ideas weren't just discussed by, the, by those. Well, I, that, I was just using four answers. We, we as a board had sure. been just discussing that as yeah. well. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, total expenditures, $54.13 million. Mr. Rice, yes, sir. you mentioned the property insurance increase. Was that just a, an industry premium increase, or was that because of, of claims that were filed? That, that, that is, we, we have been very fortunate, Conroe ISD. We have had uh, some, and, we, and still the proposed rates are great. And we haven't finalized, you know, we're still, we're, we're still working on those, there, but there will be a slight increase. The, uh, the industry out there, and, and we would think it would be from Harvey, or, or one of those, it's actually hail. We've had more hail instances in the Dallas, San Antonio area, more widespread losses from these insurance companies that the market is almost dried up. There's not a lot of providers out there. Our rates are still, when you compare us to any district in our area, well below what, what, what other districts are. They were not rate increases that our carrier imposed on us because of a high number of claims or something like that. Right, right. It's the market.
So this is just our revenues and expenditures together for our 2019-2020 uh, budget. On the revenue side, our beginning revenue budget, $502.27 million. We have $53.35 million worth of new revenues, giving us a projected 1920 revenue budget of $555.62 million. On the expenditure side of the budget, um, our beginning expenditure budget was $495.45 million. We have $54.13 million worth of new expenditures. That includes the transfer to the capital maintenance fund. For a projected 1920 expenditure budget of $549.58 million. That'll leave us with an estimated budget surplus of $6.04 million. Um, one thing we'll notice is when you, when you hear $54.13 million, that is a very, you know, that is a, that is a large increase, but I want to just kind of explain that just a little bit. If you look in the revenue side, you can see House Bill 3 alone requires $45.11 million of, of expenditures in our programs. So we have to account for that. And on the other side, it's our implementation of the new capital maintenance fund uh, that make up that. So, so if we hear, oh, it's a, a, you know, a huge budget increase, because we've been very good at keeping our budget increases below our guidance of inflation and enrollment growth. This year we're going to exceed that, but those are the reasons. Yes, I have a question. How's that, how, is that going to be taken into account by the Comptroller's Office on you know, transparency and all the, all the ratings that we're always proud of having? Are they going to take into account that these issues are forced upon us? I mean, because well, well, every di every to every district? every district, yeah, we're compared against other districts, so they're yeah. all you know they but, all have you the know, same. You know, like I mean, if you just have a have a huge salary increase in the past, that could have cost you one of those stars. Sure, I mean, you know, and so I, even though it's measured against other districts and they're facing the same situation or law, if you will. Uh, I, I just wasn't sure that it was going to allow anybody to qualify for that. You, right. you see what I'm saying? Right, yeah. I, I think the one area that, that, that we might have to watch is our capital maintenance fund because that, that might change some of those some of those percentages because that's $10 million, but, but I think we'll be okay. So that did show a uh, potential uh, surplus in the budget. And, and of course, our, our recommendation is to save the surplus in the general fund to support the 2021 budget. Uh, I have a pro forma uh, to present to you this evening for 2021, but it is very early. There's still a lot of knowns moving into that into that budget. Um, and then if there happens to be any funds left over, we can utilize that to uh, sur uh, surplus to support the capital maintenance fund to possibly reduce bond debt requirements and cover any unforeseen uh, expenditures. So this is our 2019-2020 proposed tax rate. As I said on the m and side, we're recommending a tax rate. It's in the middle column of 97 cents for maintenance and operation. That is a nine cent tax decrease uh, on our m and side. On our debt service side, we're recommending a debt service tax rate of 26 and a half cents. That is a four and a half cent increase on the debt service side. Two of those pennies are from the the tax rate swap that we did, so that's just a, a, a little little odd there. For a total tax rate of a dollar twenty three and a half, for a total tax rate reduction for the district of four and a half cents. Hmm. So this is our two thousand nineteen two thousand twenty budget, uh, just shown in a in a in a pie chart broken down by major object. Payroll remains, our, payroll remains our largest expenditure at 87.6%. Uh, contracted services are 5% of our budget. Largest item in there is utilities. Uh, supplies and materials, 4.2% of our budget. The largest item in there is fuel. Uh, equipment and other, 1.4%. Uh, the largest item in there is our property insurance. And then uh, capital maintenance fund uh, is about 1.8% uh, of our budget, and that is what it is. Total budget five hundred and forty nine million five hundred eighty thousand two hundred and ninety four dollars. So I put together a little fund balance analysis for you. As you know, our, our, our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance that is twenty five percent of our annual budget, which gives us approximately three months worth of expenses. Uh, so looking at our preliminary budget of five hundred forty nine point six million, twenty five percent of that budget would be one hundred thirty seven point four million. Uh, just to give you a range, 20% of our budget 
uh, would be 109.9 million. Our estimated unassigned fund balance at 831 and 19 is $134.1 million, which is 24.4% of the budget. That leaves us just a little bit under uh, our 25% target. However, uh, at a 20% target, that would leave us available $24.2 million uh, above, that, above that target. <clears throat> so as I said, I have a pro forma now. You know, this is very early. It's, it's, it's our current understanding of, uh, of how the law will work. So uh, let me walk you through it. Uh, our beginning revenue is $555,062,000. Uh, uh, local revenue limited to 2.5% AV growth. Now, we are calculating this with an estimated 5% AV growth for, for 2021. That will actually compress our tax rate down an additional penny and a half. Um, but that growth will still be $12.9 million. We're also moving to current year values instead of the one year lag that we've had in the past. So even with 1,350 student growth, with the offset of the, of the new uh, current year values, our state funding is actually going to decrease by $3.7 million. Um, so our total revenue increase will be $9.2 million, giving us an estimated total revenue of $564.82 million. <clears throat> On the expenditure side, uh, $549.58 million. Uh, estimate on our, you know, looking at a 2.5% across the board raise, $10.5 million. Additional personnel for an, another 1,350 students, about $10 million. Other expenses, you, t you know, we're opening stock in, but we just heard great news that have a lot of offset with the new uh, solar plant that, that's going out there, so, so we can adjust that slightly. So total estimated expenditure, incre expenditure increase of $22 million, uh, giving us an estimated total expenditure budget of $571.58 million. And that's leaving us with a, put a potential deficit of $6.76 million. And if y'all remember, we talked about uh, in 2021, the board will have the option to raise the MO tax rate by one cent and access additional uh, golden pennies. So that one cent tax rate will generate approximately 3.7 million, but the state will kick in their fair share. So it'll be worth over $7 million to the district. And it is a one time of, without having to go to voters, but it has to be a unanimous vote of the board for that to be approved for that one cent tax increase. And so that one cent would take care of you know, if this was our budget, that one cent tax increase would take care of that uh, potential deficit. <clears throat> on the on the revenue, the five fifty five, what what percentage of tax collections are you using for that as well? I know in the past we've used like ninety seven percent. Yeah, in in the past when we were when we were uh, transferring that money to the debt service, we backed off the hundred percent collections, but this is at a hundred percent collections now. This is at a hundred percent. hundred percent. Yes, sir. Wiggle. The, there, there's very little wiggle room now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Two, 30,000 quick questions. Yeah. One being with the proposed budgets and the proposed tax decrease. Mm -hmm. It's a very simplistic question, but are, that's, we're not cutting anything. Are we in mean, any? No, we're program. actually increasing. Yeah. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not losing anything. Correct. And then secondly, um, how do you, does your pro forma for 2020-21 include the implementation of the pre-K program? That budget is being in, is in, in the nineteen twenty budget. And so what it does not include is any additional space, no, no, you know, seats for students. It doesn't include that, but it includes teachers, uh, curriculum, and, and stuff like that. No, no buildings, no. No, no, no buildings, no, nothing yeah. like that. So uh, what's next? Uh, we should re receive our certified property values from the appraisal district on July 25th. Um, uh, we have a future uh, public hearing on August 6th about the budget and on August 20th. Um, and then on August 20th, that'll be the date that we also ask the board to uh, adopt uh, the budget and the, the 
architecture I did that time. Well, workshop. Well, August sixth is that August sixth workshop? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good job. All right, Dr. No. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on July 16th, 2019. The quorum of the board is present, including the following members. Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert. I think we have a few more items, Dr. Yeah. No, before we get to the yeah. hearing. We still got E and o. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. My apologies. E and Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> um, item 6, uh, E. Mr. Rice. Yeah, this is, uh, we're recommending uh, that the board approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $17,150,000 of general fund unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund and $20 million of the general fund unassigned fund balance to the capital projects fund. Um, as has been, been presented and discussed, the, the above noted fund balance transfer of $17,150,000 uh, is required to service the debt during the 2018-2019 uh, fiscal year. $7.1 million of that is the uh, effect of the golden penny that we accessed and we actually arbitrarily decreased the debt service tax rate by two cents. So this is paying that two cents back to the debt service. Mm -hmm. And then $10 million of that is our annual $10 million that, that, that we pay down to the debt service. Next year, we will no longer move that if, if the board approves that in, in, at the August meeting, but for now, we must do it to, to support this year. Um, the $20 million uh, required for the capital uh, projects maintenance funds, as y'all remember, that is available fund balance that we had that we earmarked $10 million to seed the capital maintenance fund, $8.5 million to purchase uh, two uh, future school sites, and $1.5 million for buses. And at this time, I recommend your approval. You all have a motion, Mr. Alton? I second the motion. Second the motion. All in favor? All in discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Um, 6F, receive financial report. All right. All right. I will look at the uh, financial statements for the month of June for the district. Uh, these statements will include our general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Um, the first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances for the district. Each month, we like to take a look at our cash and investments and concentrating once again on our general fund. You can see we have cash on hand of $500. Uh, bank deposits of $223,000, investments in the pools of $73 million, investments with Wood Forest National Bank of $122 million, our long-term our long investments with TCG Investment Advisors, uh, $51.3 million for total cash investments uh, in the general fund of $246.4 million. Just taking a look at property tax collections, uh, this year, we're currently at 98.5% collections compared to 99 uh, last year. So slightly behind where we are, but we still feel confident we'll, we'll reach our goal of 100%. Next statement is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Revenues are broken down into three categories that, are in, that include our local and intermediate sources, our state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And we can look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources and we can see property taxes, largest generator of revenues for our general fund and debt service, uh, food sales and food service, and premium contributions in our self-funded insurance. This is our 2015 bond referendum status update. Uh, currently to date, we've expended or encumbered $500.3 million with our 2015 bond program. We have an estimate of about $17.9 million to complete. That'll give us a total project forecast of $518.2 million. That will leave us with about $10.3 million worth of contingency. Um, as you can see, a lot of the projects are closing out. Uh, the one that we still have out there, you know, with about 50% is stocked in junior high. So coming to a close. And I, and I foresee that, uh, that contingency figure, that, that available funding remaining in this bond, increasing as we close and finalize a lot of these projects. Mr. Rice. Yes, sir. All of the bonds have been issued, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
you know, you remember the, the, the bond was $487 million and the board right. has kicked in over $41 million on top of that. So that's how we get to the $528 million total bond package. Self-funded insurance, uh, looking good for the year. Total revenues, $41.5 million. Total expenses, $39.5 million. So revenues over expenses, right about $2 million. So we're looking good heading into two of our busier months, July and August. Um, participation at our, at our clinic is, is really doing well. Very happy there. We've had uh, 5,280 people elect our clinic uh, for their health needs, and we're proud of that averaging about 528 a month. Our investments, uh, par value uh, of our total portfolio, $401.6 million. Uh, our pools are, are yielding 2.5%. Our investment with Wood Forest National Bank, 2.5%. Um, TCG Investment Advisors have a wham of 337 days, but they're, they're starting to pick it up. They're at 2.158% leaving us a combined portfolio with a WAM of 40 days at 2.466%, and our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is currently at 2.075. Thank you, sir. Dr. No, are we sure? <laughs> I was tired for Darren. I was trying to give him a break. <laughs> I was willing to take it. Uh, appreciate it, Mr. Rice. Great job, for you, Darren. I'm sorry. All right. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on July 16th, 2019. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, Mr. Sanders. The board will hear the complaint appeal of parents, Mr. and Mrs. S, in accordance to local board policy, F and G. This hearing is being recorded. Mr. and Mrs. S's complaint is against various staff members at Derrickson Elementary School. Because the complaint is against district employees and because personally identifiable information about a public school student could be revealed, the hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and 551.0821. The board will also go into executive session under Texas Government Code Section 551.071 for consultation with the board's attorney. The meeting is now adjourned into executive session under Texas Government Code Sections 551.071, 551.074 and 551.0821. Everyone not associated with this hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 727. The board is reconvened in open session. The time is now 843. The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decisions of the level one and level two hearing officers. The board can overturn the hearing officer's decision or the board can grant any relief they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion? I move that we uphold the decision of the level one and level two hearing officers. Is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor? Unanimous decision. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Shaw, the district will send you written notice confirming the action taken by the board. Okay, this concludes our hearing. All right, we're back on the. Oh. All right, um, about open session. No, it's already open. We are, um, open. We are open, open at right. this point. So, right. uh, item nine. Item nine B: Receive local manual policy manual update one one three and revisions to local board policy, DFBB. Yes. Would yes. you like me to tell you about update one thirteen, or have you read it extensively? If you have any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. If uh, not, we will have that on your agenda for next month to adopt local policies that are contained within that update. And just a heads up, so you can you know, keep your eyes rested up, the next update we get will have over 1,000 pages in it from this past legislative session. And so, um, just your eyes. We'll be <laughs> for in October. All right. Okay. You have that much memory. Item 9C, consider approval of settlement agreement in FG. Nate, you need to... You need we, to take us into um, okay. We can go into a closed session, or I can um, tell you skeletally what. what um, well, we just as well, then. Or we, what, it's well, up to you guys. We are. I want to understand if I. Okay. I, I would prefer you. that we go. Sure. Um, so okay. you'll need to read So, a uh, closed session of the board will now be held on matters containing board notice uh, for this meeting as authorized by Section 551 0.071 551. 
and 551.0821 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such action, final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at, shall be at either A, this public meeting upon reconvening of a public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public, public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board meeting will now be held. The time is 8, 4 to 6 p.m. The uh, board is now in open session at 9, 8 p.m. The next item on the agenda is... I'll guess C. Just item, yeah, consider C. Approval item C. Item uh, C. 9C, consider approval of settlement agreement. Mr. President, I move the approval of the settlement agreement in civil action number 4, dot, or colon 17, hyphen CV, hyphen 03011. General, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Yes. Um, do we have a motion? Oh, one one quick thing before, before, I don't know if I can, we can say it's your own session or not, but something I've noticed is I go back and I, I watch the video of our, of our sessions, mm -hmm. and that camera picks up everybody but the last person. Is there a way to upgrade that camera? <laughs> Pick up everybody <laughs> and everything that we're doing during those meetings? We can absolutely, we'll. It actually toggles, and we so we toggle. try to reset it before, but yes, we will definitely okay. work on making that more. Please do. Yes. No problem. We have a, we have a motion, gentlemen. Motion to adjourn. A motion. 